Hey there folks, today we're going to day 9. Let's roll. Today we're going to talk a little bit about security. But before we do that, it's in interesting that we learn a little bit how network ports work. When we think of a network, we can see the information coming from one computer or one device traveling through a media and getting to another device. That's the principle of a network. We're used to think of that as getting maybe a letter from a house and getting to another house, but computer networks is more like an apartment building where every application has a different apartment. They have the same address, they are on the same building. Each of them have a separate domain for their own processing. An HTTP application it's going to be transported to the port 80. The address is the same, but the port that is going to be delivered is different. Come on! And if we keep this in mind, we can see how a connection has the potential to be a separate socket. <laughs> so a few TCP ports that you're going to see, uh, they are very common. You're going to see port 80 for HTTP, you're going to see port 22 for SSH, that is the one that we're already using, port 23 for Telnet, port 53 for DNS, and so on and so forth. I hate doors! There is a huge list of known ports that you can check. If we want to check the status of those ports, I mean each apartment inside my apartment building here, I can use netstat, that is a network status, there's a bunch of information here. Not everything is what we want to look at. And if we want to check the ports that are listening, which means they are ready to receive packets, they are open to receive packets. I can use dash L for listening. And I want to see all the ports that are listening. This is not as easy to read as the new counterpart for nets that, that is SS, that means socket status and I want to see everything that is listening on the ports TCP. Much easier to read, right? I have the ports, I have HTTP port, I have SSH. There is one program that is not going as a default that we can install that is really interesting. That is a port listener or a port sniffer. It's called nmap. And that means network mapping localhost. Okay, what are the port? It's even easier to read because I can see the number of the port, the state, and the services that is running there. So I have port 22 TCP open for SSH and I have port 80 TCP open to HTTP. But if I don't want to have my ports exposed like that, if I want to block them for malicious individuals that want to use my server to stuff that is not supposed to do. Firewalls are specialized programs that can be evolved to an entire machine designed to do that. But the basic principle is I have a list of possible interests and I can allow or deny them. It's like I, I get a person at the entrance of my apartment building blocking entrances or letting people in to get to the, those apartments. It's much like that. So what are my options? I'm going to show you one that is really simple. So that is the uncomplicated firewall, UFW. Obviously, to work with that, I have to have the right credentials. So we're going to use sudo a lot here. UFW status. So it's inactive. I don't have my firewall enabled yet. Let's do one test. Remember that our server is serving HTTP and it's uh, enabled for uh, open an H HTML page. So we can deny that access to port 80 because HTTP works on port 80. So 
my status is still inactive. I don't have the firewall running yet. sudo ufw deny http and sudo ufw enable. Okay, firewall is active and enable. So we can check again the status and you see port 80 TCP is denied everywhere. Refresh on our page is not going to work. Now we can allow back sudo ufw allow HTTP. The rule was enabled and you could see that it was instantaneous. Checking the status, it's allowed. It's explicitly allowed. Disable. So we stop the firewall, it's no longer running. Okay, so if you check for status, it's inactive. So that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. See you next time.